Today we're talking about speaking with a relaxed, natural American accent by using some relaxation exercises. These exercises are what help my students lower their placement, relax their neck and throat area, and really capture that American sound. I'm Rachel, and I've been teaching the American accent and listening comprehension to non-native speakers for over 15 years. Check out rachelsenglish.com to learn more about improving your spoken English and to get the free mini course, Top 3 Ways to Master the American Accent. First, to learn more about placement, it might be helpful to hear a student speaking with two different placements. This is Sean, a student in Rachel's English Academy who's been working really hard on finding a natural American accent through lowering placement and relaxation. His native language is Mandarin. This is how he sounded when he first joined the Academy. Hello everybody, my name is Sean. So today I'd like to make a free talk video by using the random question generator. So let's go to the website and click for a question. And this is what he sounded like after about four to six weeks of practice with the Academy materials. Hello everybody, my name is Sean. So today I'm gonna do a free talk video by using the random question generator. The sound started out pressed in his face. Hello everybody, my name is Sean. And now it's relaxed into his whole body. Hello everybody, my name is Sean. Hello everybody, my name is Sean. Hello everybody, my name is Sean. We're going to learn a bit more from Sean in a moment on how he did this. First, let's talk about where in the body I want you to feel the voice. Then we can talk about relaxation techniques to get you there. One of the things I often talk about with my students is placement. I sometimes feel like their voice only comes from their head and is placed very much so here. Whereas my voice, when I speak English, rests more here and I feel the placement a little lower. Let's talk a little bit about what happens when you're speaking. So the diaphragm here, an involuntary muscle just like your heart, tenses up which pulls down a little bit. That turns your lungs into a vacuum and it sucks the air in. When your diaphragm relaxes, the air then comes out. Your vocal cords here are what make the sound. Think of blowing up a balloon and taking the neck of it, pulling it wide so it makes that annoying squeak sound. That's what your vocal cords are. So your lungs are the balloon and your vocal cords are the mouth of the balloon. And this pressure here is the energy of the voice. So this is the energy, the fuel of the voice, and up here we have the articulators, the tongue, the teeth, the jaw. That takes the core sound made by the vocal cords and shapes them into the sounds of American English. I feel like many of my students lack a connection to this fuel, to the energy, and they speak only from their face. Of course, their body works in the same way, they're bringing in the air, but they seem to have no attachment to it, and their voice seems completely detached from their bodies. But when I speak, I feel my voice very attached to my body. One exercise you can do to try to focus on your body rather than your face when you're speaking is just to exaggerate the movement here of your abdomen to connect more to a lower sensation of the breath. Now you wouldn't want to do that when you're speaking, but it could be a good exercise for you to get you into your body. So here we have the fuel and here the articulation. Now we want our articulators to be very relaxed. If there's any tension in the throat, for example, it will bring the voice up and the placement up. And then we lose the connection here to the fuel of the voice to the body. We don't want tension in our body. We don't want to lose that connection, so we need to relax. My colleague Tom and I are going to go through some exercises now to relax the jaw, tongue, lips, neck and throat, so that you can feel natural and relaxed speaking English without pain as you work on your American accent. These and other exercises in Rachel's English Academy are exactly what Sean worked with so hard for those weeks to lower his placement. Another Chinese speaker in the academy noticed Sean's improvement and reached out to him for advice. I would suggest that you really take module three very seriously because it is, it is very important for us to learn how to relax if we want to, if we want to discover, you know, voices uh, around the chest, you know, how to, it, and then our throat, how to relax our throat. Um, it is very important for us to learn to relax so that we can discover the placement. Uh, you know, from here up until here. You want daily practice. You want to find relaxation. Now, let's see some exercises you can do every day to relax. First off, you may have heard from teachers in the past that you need to drop your jaw more. More jaw drop. 
This instruction can create tension as you work on vowel and diphthong sounds that need a bunch of space, like ah, aw, and I, and others. Instead of thinking about using your muscles to hold the jaw open, which can add tension to the face, think of releasing the jaw. Let the jaw drop down using gravity, rather than muscle. If you put your fingers just under your ears and open and close your mouth, you'll feel movement of the jawbone. We'll call this spot the jaw hinge. Think of releasing your jaw from back here rather than forcing the chin down. By doing this, we lose the tension that can affect the sound and we have a fuller, more open sound. We'll come back to the hinge, but first, let's start some jaw relaxation exercises. Let's start by just easily massaging the jaw with your fingertips. As you begin freeing the jaw, you may start to yawn more. Awesome. Keep yawning. It's a great stretch and provides you with wonderful deep breaths that encourage support. When you yawn, make sure you yawn both vertically and horizontally. Really get a great stretch for the jaw and the lips, actually, with that one. Now, using the heel of your hand, drag the hand down the jawbone on the face towards your chin. Really thinking about releasing that jaw hinge and letting the face muscles relax. I look silly. Mm. But it is relaxing. Totally okay to look silly. It's great, actually. <laughs> oh, that feels so good. Now, let's go back to that hinge we spoke about earlier, back here. Allow your newly relaxed jaw to release down for a moment and feel that space that opens up under your ear as the hinge releases down. This is a great pressure point on our face. By pressing into it, we can release the jaw even more. Mm -hmm. Now, this can feel quite painful, so don't hurt yourself, but it will feel great when you let go. Uh -huh. <sighs> Now, take your chin between thumb and index finger and move the jaw up and down. Well, oh, it's hard. Don't hurt yourself on this one either. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> watch is. your tongue. It can be very difficult. Yeah, make sure your oh. tongue's not in the way. But really let your hand yeah. control your jaw. You'll feel the jaw kind of try to fight back a little bit. See if you can relax it and just let your hand be in control. Yeah, my jaw definitely does not want to give up control. Yeah. Yeah, so lots, lots to work on. Now, if you haven't felt silly already, prepare to. And if you're really relaxed, prepare to let a little saliva fly around. Now, clasp your hands together and shake your body and face, keeping that jaw released. I don't know if I'm willing to do that on camera. <laughs> Come on, Rachel. Okay, do it again. <laughs> Let's use this newly released jaw a bit and practice on some vowel sounds. Some vowel sounds that use some jaw drop, so ah and aw. Now, let's go from oo, which has a tight lip rounding here, oo, and move into aw. Now, let's move from oo into ah. You can practice going back and forth, and this may help you hear and feel the difference between those two sounds. All right, hopefully your jaw feels more relaxed. Remember to do this whenever you feel tension creep in as you practice and drill, and when you're having trouble finding the difference between vowel sounds, it may just be that you want more space, and the best way to create space is to release that jaw. From the L to the R to the T, the tongue is very important when it comes to articulation of all kinds of sounds. So having a relaxed tongue that can move quickly and efficiently is a very good thing. Let's learn how to relax this very strong muscle. Just how strong is the tongue? Very. It's considered the strongest muscle in the body in relation to its size. One way to see how strong it is, is to put your pinky finger to the roof of your mouth and then pin your pinky finger to the roof of the mouth with the tongue like that. Now, have a tongue versus pinky war. <laughs> if you're like me, your tongue wins every time and your pinky hurts. <laughs> Ow. So, let's relax this mega muscle. 
First, stick out your tongue. Make sure you have clean hands for this and massage your tongue. Now this may feel weird, but it's a good way to get to know this muscle that works so hard for us. Ah. Ah. Hmm. I've never done that before. It's strange. Uh -huh. It's a strange feeling, but it actually kind of feels good. Uh -huh. Now, stick your tongue out again, and this time, see if you can go from relaxed to pointed to relaxed and back and forth without tensing the rest of the face. So... Uh, okay. Huh? Uh. It's hard to do it without uh. tensing your lips. Yeah. You can get there eventually, but just to start, just begin exploring that ability. Maybe give them a side angle of that. Sure. All right. At first, you may feel like you need to tense the lips and jaw to tense the tongue, but eventually, you'll be able to isolate the tension to the tongue alone. Then, keeping the tip of the tongue behind the front teeth, where it stays for almost all of the vowel sounds, do some tongue push-ups, or push-outs, to be more accurate. Oh, I've never seen that before either. So you'll stick out the middle of the tongue, uh, giving the tongue a good stretch. Wow, you're really good at that. Did you learn this in acting school? I did. Okay. I spent a lot of time doing these exercises <laughs> in school. Let me try. It's hard if you're not used to it. Yeah, it's a little bit of a strange movement. But again, doing this will help you have a great relationship with all of what's happening in your mouth so mm. that when you're working with a teacher or when you're working with yourself and you learn about where the tongue is supposed to be, it may become easier to do that new movement or action with your tongue because you've been able to have these exercises. Yeah. Now. One way to help yourself is to put your hand in front of your tongue and reach towards your hand to give yourself a bit of a challenge. Oh, now, wow. I will never reach my hand, <laughs> but it's something to reach for. Now, my least favorite exercise, but a great one for the tongue. We're going to circle the tongue around the mouth in both directions. Now, imagine that you've got peanut butter stuck on your gums, and you're going to circle the tongue around trying to get the peanut butter out. Hmm. I kind of like that one. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that your least favorite? Because when you do it 10 times one way and 10 times the oh, other way, your, tongue, you, your gets... tongue starts to really get yeah. sore. So work up to 10 times one way, and then you can switch mm. to 10 times the mm -hmm. other way. But you can start with five. <laughs> now, drop your head, relax the tongue out of the mouth, and shake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Do I have to try that? <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> Okay, I better hold my hair. Perfect. <laughs> Such relaxation. Yeah. Now, you should feel the tongue release all the way in the back of the mouth. And as you do this, some saliva may fly around. If so, congratulations. You're doing it perfectly. Now, let's practice some articulation with this newly relaxed tongue. So that's using the unvoiced T sound. Now let's try the voiced D sound. And you can just feel the very tip of your tongue on the gum ridge there for that nice, light touch, efficient T and D. Let's try. And then some fun practice. Trumpet players call this double tonguing. It's to articulate the tongue in the front with the tip of the tongue for the T, and then a K sound with the back. Oh wow! When you do that, you just feel your tongue going back and forth. Yeah, it's really fun. All right. Nice job. Remember, this is a great way to get to know your tongue and may be really helpful when it comes to dealing with complicated consonant clusters that involve the tongue in words like strike, plurals, and twelfth. Those are tough ones. Some of my students have a hard time moving their tongue without moving their jaw. So as you do some of these exercises, make sure you do some holding the jaw firm so that the tongue is moving independently, like this. You should be able to do it without moving the jaw at all. If you're having a hard time, try holding on to the jaw lightly to really focus your effort on the tongue. I don't know about you, 
but when I was a kid, one of the funny faces that I loved making was the fish face. <laughs> nice. That's a good one. The lips are two wonderful articulators for many sounds. B, P, F, V, M, W, as well as rounding for vowels and diphthongs like oo, uh, aw, oh, o, oh, ow. Let's practice some relaxation exercises that will help our lips become as flexible and versatile as possible. Let's start by massaging the lips, which are really mostly skin and mucous membrane. Any way you like. I can't do that because I'm wearing lipstick, otherwise I would. <laughs> I like to spend some time on the corners of the lips, where there is some muscle that you can feel. Now, blow through your lips, like we're making the sound of an airplane or a boat. This can be a good chance to connect with your support and blow through the lips from support. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go higher than you. Okay. You know, that really is hard if you have any tension in your lips. Yeah. They won't do that. Singers do that too. You can start by blowing through just with the breath. And then add voice to it. Now, let's try the fish face. Can you do it? It actually feels pretty good. <laughs> now here again, let's drop our heads and shake the lips out. Do I have to do that again? You don't have to if you don't want to. Well, it messes up my hair. <laughs> wow. So when you're doing these exercises, try not to wear lipstick <laughs> and do it before you do your hair. And pull your hair back in a bun. Now let's work on some vowel sounds with the lips. So ooh wee, ooh wee, ooh -wee. So the lips start very forward and rounded, and then pull back in the corners for that E vowel. Ooh wee, ooh wee, ooh wee. And now we're gonna get the jaw involved on this next one. We'll go from ooh, where again the lips are rounded forward, into aw, aw, where the jaw will drop a bit. Ooh aw, ooh aw, ooh aw, ooh aw. And now let's go from ooh wee to ooh aw. Ooh wee, ooh wah, ooh wee, ooh wah, ooh wee, ooh wah. Nice. Now, drop your head and shake your lips out again. <laughs> <laughs> and you're done. When we help students find the uh sound, which we consider the core sound of American English, we often suggest finding a chest resonance or a lower resonance to help them find this sound. The way to find that lower resonance is to relax your neck and throat and connect the vibrations of your sound to your body. Here are a few exercises to help relax your neck and throat and access that body connection. First, let's just relax the head down, chin to chest, and massage the back and sides of the neck. I can do that. <laughs> this should feel really good. <laughs> Ooh, it does. Ugh. Feel free to give your shoulders some love. You may also feel like sighing as you do this. A nice, easy sound carried by easy breath. <sighs> Great. Now let's roll our head around, starting slowly. Just let your head hang down with the chin on the chest and start to gently roll it back and forth just a little bit. Don't go too far. Stay slow and then start rolling it up even further on each side. Then eventually you can go around the whole circle. How does that feel, Tom? That feels really good. Now as you go around the full circle, if you feel any spot that feels tense, that you feel a little bit of ache in as you go around, really focus on that. Maybe get in there with your fingers and, and, and rub that out so that you can go ahead and free the neck all the way around. Now drop one ear to your left shoulder. While you do this, gently reach your right hand towards the ground. You'll feel a little stretch in the right side of your neck. Don't go too far, just do what feels good to release. Then, switch sides. How are you doing there, Tom? Mm, this is great. <laughs> 
Now, leading with your eyes, look over your left shoulder as far as you can, but of course, don't hurt yourself. And switch. Here's one that may feel a little bit weird at first. Let's start with a very relaxed face. The jaw should be relaxed and possibly hanging open just a little bit. Let's just sigh, nice full breath in and a relaxed sigh out. Let a little sound out with the sigh. Let the vibrations from the sound relax the throat even more. <sighs> now put both hands on either side of your larynx and very gently jiggle it back and forth. As you do this, continue your easy breath in and easy <sighs> sigh out. If you're able to do this, then it means your throat is relaxed because it's impossible to do this with a lot of throat tension. Lastly, let's rub our hands together so they're nice and warm and then place them around your neck, a natural heating pad, mm. though it cools down a little too quickly. Now, with your newly relaxed neck and throat, sigh on ah and see if you can feel the vibration in the chest. Ah. Ah. This relaxation will really come in handy as you work on your American English. A lot of my students who speak with natural throat tension because of their native language have a hard time identifying the tension because it's so normal to them. So one way to work with this to try to move your placement down is just to think of opening up the neck some. And all of these exercises will help. So go through all of these exercises and then think of an opening sensation so that your voice can rest more here. Anytime there's tension in the neck, it brings the placement up higher. But we want the American English placement to feel like it's coming from here. You've learned so much about relaxing. Now, see how it affects sounds by studying different placements in this video, where I listen to you and give you feedback on your placement. This is a topic that I'm so passionate about. Don't forget to get the free course, Top 3 Ways to Master the American Accent at rachelsenglish.com slash free. Please subscribe with notifications on and keep your learning going now with this video. I absolutely love being your English teacher. That's it and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.